Hello there. Welcome to Brittany's Impact Series. I'm Jenny Howitt and this series is about alcohol addiction and how it has impacted my late 26 year old daughter Brittany Howitt. Uh, this is her pictures back here and it's a, a story about how you know alcohol impacted her and very quickly led to her death and it's also about how it affected um, my own life and all of her family and friends as well. So I'm hoping that this series will be a way to kind of, you know, turn her death into hopefully a positive impact. And my hope is to, if it could even save one life, it will be all worth it, but hopefully many more in her honor. So today, um, I'd like to talk about if you're new to addiction. So it could be whether, uh, if you're the person who you know, has found yourself, you realize that you might be addicted or you're trying to figure out if maybe you're addicted. Um, or if you are, uh, you know, worried about a loved one that you think could possibly be addicted to alcohol. And a lot of what I say on here really could be true for, you know, for any other type of drug as well. Uh, alcohol actually is a legal drug. So, uh, but um, basically I tend to talk a little more about alcoholism because that's what Brittany you know, was addicted to, but, you know, addiction's addiction, uh, you know, no matter whatever the substance of choice is. So basically, you know, the very first step when you first kind of begin to go down this road is to really take, just take a deep breath. You know, just, you're kind of, if it really is an issue, you're, you're probably in for a little bit of a, a long road. Um, but just take a deep breath. And uh, the, the worst thing you could do is, was, would be to deny it because uh, alcohol addiction is a progressive disease. So the earlier you catch it, the better chance you're going to be able to get yourself or your loved one, you know, into recovery. And that's really what we want. Um, so, you know, if you are beginning to think that either yourself might have a problem or that someone that you love has a problem, it's a good chance there probably is a problem uh, because it takes a lot to finally kind of you know recognize that there may be a problem usually um, so some of the signs that you could really kind of look for would be you know if there's been some mood changes um, maybe a worsening of depression or new depression that what you know maybe wasn't there before irritability um, you know if, if, if your work is starting to suffer or their work you know, you're starting to miss days of school or can't make it into work um, because of being hung over, things like that. Um, you know, if you start to realize that you or your loved one is starting to either drink more frequently or a lot heavier, you know, more drinks at a sitting or, or both, uh, you know, just kind of getting intoxicated a few times a week, that kind of thing. So those are all, you know, pretty good signs. If you begin to see, you know, someone's stealing, you know, maybe your son is lifting some money out of your purse or whatever, could be to, you know, to, to fund uh, purchasing alcohol. So there could be lying that you're not used to seeing. Um, it's pretty amazing what addiction can do to many people, you know, when they're desperate to get their um, either alcohol or drug of choice. So another really big key um, thing to really look out for is to see if, if you notice that they're beginning to maybe spend a little more time in their bedroom. You know, kind of, uh, alcohol actually is a very isolating disease. So quite often when uh, someone is really getting into becoming more of an alcoholic, uh, they try to hide it. They're actually usually pretty good at hiding it. That's where a lot of the lying comes in, quite frankly. Um, but, you know, sometimes they'll either drink in their room a little bit extra before they go out with their friends so that, you know, their friends don't notice um, how much they really are drinking. But at a certain point, it actually can get to a point where you pretty much they would prefer to be at home and drink where they can drink as heavily as they really want to to or need to or they feel they need to um, so you know if you start to see someone 
becoming isolated, not doing as much with their friends, staying home, that's a really big indicator there could be something going on there. It could be other things, just be flat out depression, but it definitely could be a sign of addiction. So my biggest uh, recommendation is uh, whether you're the one addicted or potentially addicted or the loved one, is really get yourself educated. So I'm going to give you a few um, resources here that maybe you could kind of take a look. There's lots of books on it. Um, so really, you know, get out there and just learn as much as you can, as fast as you can. Uh, the thing is that you can go to lots of different types of meetings. You know, there's AA meetings, um, there's Smart Recovery, lots of different types of meetings. And I've mentioned before, lots of different styles. Uh, you know, go to ones that if, if you don't click, go to it again. Uh, maybe there'll be a different group of people next time or go to a different type of meeting or to a different location of that same type of meeting. Uh, you know, just switch it up until you find something that actually, you know, really clicks with you. Um, one thing to know about meetings is loved ones can actually go to if it's marked as an open meeting. So there's some that are considered closed. Um, and you'll begin to learn like AA, you know, on their schedule, they might have like a C for closed and O for open, meaning that the addicted ones and their loved ones can go to the open meetings. So it's a really good place to just really listen to people who have been through this. Uh, many people in recovery are there trying to help the next person, you know, so they're talking about what did and didn't work for them. It's a really good way to to get a handle on what this is all about, I think. Um, there is a, what's called Rock County Crisis Inter Intervention Hotline, which is uh, the number that I kind of started out with when I first realized there was a problem with my daughter. Um, that's right here in Wisconsin. So, you know, your local area may have its own hotline. Um, for anyone in the southern Wisconsin area, uh, the Rock County Crisis Intervention Hotline number is 608 seven five seven five zero two five and there's a, a national helpline which I mentioned in one of my earlier videos but I'm going to say it here again and that's the SAMHSA helpline and that stands for Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration and so their 24-hour uh, helpline is 800-662-HELP and the help numbers is 4357. So, you know, those are some really good resources for getting information. You know, like I mentioned, go to meetings, talk to a counselor, you know, um, talk to a doctor. Now, our uh, family doctor really, quite frankly, didn't know much about addiction. Uh, he did point us into uh, some of the local, like, outpatient um, places, but, you know, we called there. And they talked to us, Our, you know, the family doctor really, you know, I'm, I'm amazed. I'm finding that physicians generally, you know, you're just a regular family doctor, really don't get that much training in addiction. So you have to kind of dig a little deeper, unfortunately. So I'm hoping that that will change and that doctors will start to get more, more and more training, um, you know, throughout the whole medical field, really. But obviously, if, if you're ever in a situation where you feel that yourself or, or your loved one's so intoxicated that you think it could be life-threatening, please, you know, call 911, you know, before you call those other numbers, call 911. And I just can't stress enough, don't think that this can't happen to you or your loved one, because it happens to all walks of life. It happens to anywhere from the poorest person out there to the richest person out there you know people of every economic status every you know gender race creed whatever it it, it goes across the boards very very common so denial really does kill because this is a progressive disease uh, if you really do have the brain disease of addiction it, it's going to just keep getting worse if you keep drinking uh, there's no denying that so Try to catch it as early as you can. All I can say is on both sides, for the addicted person and for their loved one, both sides, please, you need to have unconditional love. You need to both try to understand that both sides are going through something brand new. You know, the person that's addicted is dealing with a brain disease. It's affecting your brain. 
and that affects everything really about you. And and the, and the person who is struggling with addiction needs to hopefully, like I said before, cut your loved one a little bit of slack because they don't know what you're going through, or or maybe they've been through it, but still, they are just trying desperately to to save your life, trying to learn as much as they can, and they're on a very emotional ride. Um, you know, when when you think a loved one is, you know potentially going through something that could be so life-threatening it's a very difficult time for them too so really if both sides can really try hard to work with each other respectfully try to understand the other side you know try your best not to lie you know being open and honest I mean that's going to be the key to really helping you so communication 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 I can't stress that enough so some of the different types of um, places where you can get help is are, are things such as inpatient residential treatment. That's where you actually go usually for 28 or 30 days um, and you actually live there. Um, probably have a detox period at first and then you, you actually live there among you know, um, your peers. Um, I've got to say my daughter was just absolutely, you know, we, I told her when I had to rush her to the hospital uh, by ambulance uh, one, one of the early times, I said that she could not come back if she didn't go into this inpatient uh, treatment program that cost, it was very expensive, for uh, about 28 days. And so we pretty much forced her into there, which can, can, give great results there's experts have said that being forced into treatment you know you can learn just as much um, eventually obviously you have to finally kind of get it but at least you're getting in there you're getting the information and you're learning what's available so uh, my daughter when I took her there it was a six-hour drive to get her to the place uh, one of the best places in the country really and um, she was just absolutely petrified like a deer in headlights. It was one of the hardest things I've ever had to do um, to make her stay there. Uh, I drove, like I said, six hours, dropped her off. <laughs> Sorry, getting choked up. Dropped her off. Um, I stayed as long as I possibly could. Uh, they allowed me to uh, sleep on one of the other beds that was in the room with her. Uh, she was in the detox section that night. I stayed till about one in the morning because I had to go to work uh, at about eight o'clock the next morning. So I stayed as late as I could, slept on that bed, and then left at the last possible minute for me to drive home in time to get to work. Um, the next night, I called to you know check on her, and it was amazing. It was just amazing because uh, she she just didn't want to even take the time to talk. She wanted to get back with her new friends. So it just, it was almost like she was in a dorm, you know, with, with people that she could, she could relate to them and they could relate to her. And, you know, they were getting ready to watch a movie and it just, it was so much just a, like an amazing change in her demeanor when she finally got there. So my biggest stress is don't be afraid of these different types of treatments you know be open to it and give it a chance um, so anyway so that's the inpatient residential type of option there's also outpatient uh, programs where you you know they're, they're day op day options so you go in maybe two or three or four or five times a week during the day and um, you know I'm just giving you a general of what we kind of looked into um, so those are usually kind of like a group type meetings too. I believe that she had like a counselor in with them to kind of guide the conversation in those. Um, we've already talked about, of course, AA meetings and uh, smart recovery meetings. If uh, you're addicted to drugs, there's the uh, NA, I believe it is, meetings. Um, and a lot of these meetings then you can get like a sponsor. So someone who's been in recovery for a while, they'll begin to be a sponsor so that if you ever are just really struggling, you know, it could be middle of the night, there's someone you can call, somebody who will really try and talk you through it and, and help you as best as possible. 
So, you know, it's really, really hard to get sober on your own. I've heard this over and over again from the experts, from people in recovery. It's very difficult. Yes, it can be done, but it's very, very difficult to do it all on your own without somebody there to support you who kind of gets it, who's, who's sort of been there, you know. One of the big things I can just say is, you know, if you're beginning to wonder if you are addicted or your loved one is, you know, real key is you should never drink when you're sad because you're sad. Um, you should never, you know, use it as really self-medication to numb things out, or as my daughter said, to not feel. Uh, so you don't want to, if you're under stress at work or school, or if you're, you know, having anxiety, grief over the loss of a loved one, you know, I, I understand grief. Uh, I lost my daughter and less than two months later, lost my mother and they both live with me. So uh, lots of depression and grief come from that, of course. So, but you know, you, you have to allow yourself to feel the pain so that you can then, you know, try to process and deal with whatever it is you're going through. Uh, because drinking doesn't solve the problem. It doesn't make it go away. If anything, it's going to make it worse, particularly if you become addicted to it. But it could even be just a point of you get so intoxicated, you have a hangover and can't make it into work or, or whatever. So, um, but, you know, when people do these things, when they drink, to self-medicate, to not feel, that's where a lot of times it can then escalate into full-blown alcoholism. Got to be careful about that. It's a very prime, people will say, you know, I was a virtual drinker for years until so-and-so died or until I lost my job. And, and that's where it can still grab you. So be careful on that. So one of the, the things that I told Brittany, you know, to try and do is, you know, do all of these things, go to these meetings, but, but also because it is such an isolating type of a disease and you get so depressed, you need to really work hard at trying to, you know, do things that make you feel good, you know, proud of yourself. Um, so I, I used to tell her, you know, just every day, just do one positive thing, make one change or, or do something in positive that can either make you happy that day or that will help you then, you know, to be happy in the future. So it could be anything big or small. So it, it could be as simple as, you know, drag yourself out of bed today, get a shower, get cleaned up, you know, just feel good. Maybe sit in the sunshine or go for a walk or, you know, maybe if you love to paint, paint or learn to paint. Or read if you like to read. Um, not so much just sit around watching TV, but you know what? If you're just sleeping there drinking and that gets you, that's even better uh, than that. Uh, volunteer is a really good one. You know, I just, nothing can make a person feel quite like volunteering. You know, it, 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 it helps the people that you're helping and it makes you feel good because you did it. And gosh, you know, when you're feeling depressed, reaching out and helping someone else can really turn your spirits around. You know, a lot of this is just key, I think, in getting in the right frame of mind. You said almost have to kind of willfully kind of almost like they say, fake it till you make it, you know, just make yourself get out there, do what you need to do, whether you want to or not, do what you know would be best for you. And hopefully it'll kind of take hold. So those are really just kind of some of the things that, you know, just early on when you're, you're discovering that you, you or someone else may possibly have, um, you know, a problem with alcohol. And, and there is such a thing as alcohol abuse versus alcoholism. Uh, and I'm not an expert, but my understanding is really, I think, alcohol abuse is kind of when you start getting into, you know, patterns of, you know, whether it's high frequency or, you know, every time uh, you uh, are with a certain friend, you have to drink, or every time you finish, um, I don't know, some kind of, um, can't 
find the right words, but, you know, certain events that just sort of triggered that, you know, like, well, my dad wasn't an alcoholic, but, you know, when he would go bowling, all the guys would drink after, you know, but if you start doing these things more and more often. So there can be things where um, people might drink like alcohol abuse. Um, and then if they one day finally kind of thought, you know, th I really need to kind of cut this out. This isn't that good. They can stop. Um, that's my understanding of alcohol abuse. Uh, but alcohol abuse can be just as dangerous. I mean, it can still, you're still drinking alcohol. You know, it is a toxin. So alcohol abuse can be very, uh, you know, not so healthy. So, but alcoholism, you know, becoming addicted that is, you know, that's a lot uh, harder to stop because your body physically is craving it. Um, and something I don't think I've mentioned yet, too, is someone who is heavily addicted, you know, to alcohol. You drink it a lot, a lot of frequency. You do need to be careful about stopping cold turkey without professional medical help because alcohol is one of the things that... If you stop cold turkey when you've been drinking it for a long time or and heavily, you literally can die from that. You can go into seizures, all kinds of things, and your your organs can just shut down. So that's where um, you know it's really important. If you've been drinking a lot, talk to a medical professional. You know you need to be detoxed in a setting where they can make sure you're doing it as safely as possible. So that's a really big key thing too. Um, if you're not used to addiction, that's something with alcohol you really have to watch out for. So, uh, you know, those are kind of the main points that I can think of in early um, addiction to alcohol. Uh, the next video I'm going to be doing is kind of talking about, uh, this is kind of a little more on the um, loved one side, but talking about, you know, tough love. Um, you go to talking to many people will say, that it requires tough love, you know, kicking people out or ultimatums, that kind of thing. Um, I'm going to be talking about what's called in enabling, you know, whether you, yeah, whatever you're doing to help your uh, person who's addicted, uh, whether that's enabling or not, and whether it's a good or bad idea, and codependency, what they talk about a um, uh, person, uh, the loved one, whether they're codependent on you know, helping their addicted person. So that's going to be in the next uh, video that I'm going to talk about. It's just going to be my opinions about it and how um, how I felt in the situation for my daughter. So uh, that's going to be in the next one. Um, just kind of as a reminder, if you would like to see more of these videos, you know, you can subscribe below. And I do have a free website, um, and that has a link to a Facebook page where I post as much helpful information, articles, you know, loads of information for people who are addicted to alcohol or think they might be also for the loved ones. So, and there can be simple things, you know, like ideas for so sober, you know, parties, um, sober drinks or, you know, uh, lots of things like that. And that website that has the link to the Facebook page, the website is www b-r-i-t-t-a-n-y-s-a-c-a-p dot com and so I just hope everybody out there keeps fighting the fight and I love you forever sweet pea Brittany Rose thanks so much everybody